hey, I'm so excited back at the CHNC, but getting to talk about perinatal um, mood disorders. So we have uh, more experts um, about uh, continuing the conversation of having a psychologically minded NICU. We have Dr. Sarah Swinson, neonatologist at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Children's Nebraska. Um, I get all, all doctors. We have Lisa Boyers, reproductive psychologist. Uh, psychiatrist at the University of Texas and Dell Children's, and Elizabeth Fisher, psychologist at Children's Wisconsin. And uh, together, you guys are making a tremendous impact in your own uh, NICUs and facilities, uh, but you guys are leading a workshop entitled Nuts and Bolts of Screening and Brief Intervention uh, for uh, PMADs in Neonatal Intensive Care Units. Um, so I'll start with you, Sarah. You were saying, um, let's talk a little bit about what is a PMAD? Um, and what is our role in identifying them? Yeah. So perinatal mood and anxiety disorders is what PMAD stands for. And we have a role as a neonatologist as an extension of our role as pediatricians mm -hmm. to screen families um, for depression. And most recently, the AAP neonatal standards of care who said we need to be screening all families in the NICU for at least depression, though there's some other evidence to suggest there's other things we should be screening for as well. And before we get into the workshop, why, why is screening important? Screening is important because 15% of, of, of women in general experience a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder and um, certain conditions, one of which may be a NICU admission, moms of multiples, whenever there's a uh, congenital anomaly in pregnancy, all things in which we see in the NICU quite often increase that risk for a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder. And I also want to uh, make sure that uh, that I mentioned that the non-birthing parent mm -hmm. mental health experience goes um, unnoticed um, a lot. So we want to be thinking about both of our parents and the, in the NICU. And so that's why this is so important to, to be discussed. I like that. I I'm just going to jump in and add that in addition to the importance of catching these disorders and treating them, when we do, we improve the outcomes for our babies. Yeah, which is, which is the ultimate goal. Um, I think it's uh, just so important to to remind ourselves that babies are with us in the NICU for such a short amount of time, but they're with their families for the rest of their lives. And so uh, healthy families make healthy babies. So I think that should be our underlying goal. So tell me a little bit about the workshop. What are people going to learn? What are some of the take home points? So um, while screening for perinatal mood and anxiety disorders isn't a standard of care in the NICUs, we believe that it should yeah. be. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. It, isn't, um, most NICUs aren't doing mm -hmm. this, uh, even though we it, it makes sense. We don't have to convince people that we should. That's right. Um, and it's recommended. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we have to convince people how they can um, how they can do this and work through the, the logistics um, of this. And so our goal is to help uh, is to help people walk through the steps of no matter where you are, no matter if you have mental health presence in your NICU, like some of us um, do or um, or not, but how you can build a successful program to screen parents for perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, and then also refer to evidence-based mm -hmm. care because screening is nothing if we don't do anything with those parents who need help, right? Totally agree. Yeah. And Elizabeth, maybe you can talk to us about some of those steps. You know, it's important, I think, to not get overwhelmed. Mm. When people think about screening, I think they get caught up in the um, difficulties and the barriers to screening that can occur. And so it's really important just to figure out where to start. I think this workshop will really help people figure out where they can start in their NICU or what they can build on if they've already started. And we're going to present a number of models of different types of screening that we've established in different hospitals. But we're also going to have time to really talk about um and troubleshoot, what could you do at your hospital and how can you start thinking about this? Yeah. And I'll play devil's advocate just because I, I can, I sense the people questioning this. They say, yeah, I buy into it. I think screening is important. I want to do the screening. I found a screener, my two question screener, my four question screener, but I'm worried that this mom is going to flag, this mom or parent is going to flag. And then we, then we're stuck and then we don't know what to do about it. So any recommendations about that? 
Yeah, we'll be providing um, our participants with a lot of resources that are available nationwide um, and also some tips for getting to know what your state specific resources are as well um, to be able to refer parents to as you develop at your own institution and build out your programs for supporting parents. I love that. Now, if people aren't at the workshop, is there another resource where they can get a hold of some of this really critical information? I'd say we're happy to provide the information if they want to reach out to us. And the other thing that we're working to develop is a mentor pro mentorship yep. um, with our program. So you can reach out to us and we'll help you wherever you're at in the process or whatever hurdles you're coming across um, to say how we got past them or to give advice because I really leaned on both the outpatient um, pediatrician screening algorithm and how that was already approved at my institutions and the experience of other NICUs who were screening to convince my institution that this was something we needed to be doing and something that was that we were able to do safely. Once we did and we got the data, there's sort of no you know, hiding it. <laughs> yeah. And um, everybody is really on board to provide more resources. Um, but sometimes getting past that initial hurdle can be um, really challenging. So we want to mentor um, others in this work. Okay. Any closing thoughts? I, I would jump in and say that uh, we have a national network of NICU psychologists under the auspices of the National Perinatal Association. I'm the co-chair along with um, Dr. Latrice Stoughton, and we are very happy as a group of psychologists. A number of us are here at the CHNC, and we are really happy to um, provide support to folks who are looking to um, increase their mental health presence. Yeah, and people can join if they're part of the CHNC RPMAD focus group. Um, and we hope that we just build the interest and the resources for parents and be able to provide um, more support for parents while they're in the NICU and after they go home. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for the very important work that you're doing. I'm looking forward to the workshop and hearing more from all of your groups and organizations. Uh, much appreciated. Thank Thanks you for having us. us.